Thank you, thank you, Pastor G. Well, I got to preach you good after that, I tell you. How's everybody doing today? Awesome, awesome. Well, Pastor Garrett said that we are, it is Pentecost Sunday, and that's 50 days after um, the death of Jesus. And we're, we're going to, I just, I want to talk about the Holy Spirit today. And I really believe that he's going to take away some fear today, and you're going to fall in love with him today, all right? And so, let's pray. Father, we love you so much. We just thank you so much for your son, Jesus. God, we thank you that you have given us your spirit, God, and I just pray, God, that you would give us a revelation of you today um, that comes straight from your heart. We love you and we bless you in Jesus' mighty name, amen. Listen, the Holy Spirit wants to be our helper. Um, He doesn't want to just help us when we're in trouble, but he wants to help us in the day ins and day outs of our lives. He wants to be involved um, in our everyday life. He's a real person. And he wants to be your best friend. Um, The Holy Spirit is God, all right? He is a person and he is also God. But he's not Jesus and he's not the Father. And I know that's kind of hard to understand a little bit. The the word Trinity is never used in the Bible, but you can see the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, sometimes even in one scripture. And in several scriptures that we have today, you'll see the Father, Son, Holy Spirit all in the same scripture. But God is one. And... Sometimes there's things in the Bible you just get down to, you explain it so much, but you just get down to the point where you just have to trust him and believe him. Um, And that's kind of where it is when when you're talking about the Trinity, that the Father's not the Son, the Son's not the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit's not the Father, but they're all one because they're in perfect unity, okay? The Holy Spirit wants to help us worship Jesus in the way that he needs to be worshipped, all right? I like to refer to the Holy Spirit a lot as the worship leader because What the Holy Spirit wants to do, he wants to continually point you to Jesus. He wants to continually um, transform our lives so that we can become more like Jesus. Um, It's it's about his Holy Spirit. Um, I believe that Jesus wants to give us a revelation of of the Holy Spirit this morning. I I love Ephesians 1.17. This is one of the scriptures that I pray. Uh, Man, there's been seasons where I've prayed this every day. Um, But it says, I keep asking you, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, that he may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation that you may know him better. Jesus has given us the Holy Spirit so that we could know Jesus better, okay? The outline for us us this morning, um, listen, trying to be a Christian without the Holy Spirit is is like trying to live without air. I, I believe there's so many Christians that are frustrated Because they have not allowed the Holy Spirit to come into their life in fullness. And we're going to talk a little bit about that today. And it becomes so frustrating as Christians because without the Holy Spirit, we don't have the power to live the life that Jesus wants us to live. Think about that for a second. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, listen, the reason Jesus was able to overcome sin and overcome the world and overcome death, hell, and the grave is because of the Holy Spirit. And he set an example for us. He didn't, he didn't conquer all those things as being 100% God. He relied on the Holy Spirit. He did that as a man so that he could show us how to live, okay? Now, that wasn't in my notes, but it needs to be in yours, all right? All right, the, 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 the outline for today is, is help. H is going to be help. E is going to be experience. L is going to be love. And P is going to be power. So I want to talk about the Holy Spirit wants to help us in every area of our life. John 14, 26 says this. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things. Everybody say all. He wants to teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. That's Jesus speaking. The Holy Spirit has many names in the Bible. I just want to talk just about a few of them. In this scripture right here in the Amplified, it says this. But the comforter. Listen, the Holy Spirit wants to comfort you. Anybody need some comfort in your life at times? I know I do. It says he'll be your counselor. The Lord knows we need that, right? We need some counsel tonight. If anybody needs some counsel, the Holy Spirit wants to help you. He wants to counsel you through some things that are hard in your life, okay? He wants to be your helper in every area. He wants to be your intercessor. He wants to be praying for you. He he wants to be your advocate. He's going to stand by you. The accuser, the enemy is accusing you night and day. But there's somebody that's standing with you that's going to advocate. It's going to pray for you. It's going to be there for you. Never leave you. He's your strengthener and he's your standby. That's who the Holy Spirit is 
in our life. He wants to be in us, on us, below us, to the left, to the right. He wants to be before us. He wants to be behind us. He wants to live on the inside of us and be our best friend. All right? He wants to, the, he's the spirit of wisdom, and he wants to teach us about everything. Psalm 46, 1 says this, God is our refuge and strength. He's an ever-present help in trouble. So I hope you can listen fast because we're going to go through this next part really fast. But I want to just kind of give you an understanding. We say the Holy Spirit is our helper. What is he going to help me with? Well, he's going to help us to pray. You know why? Because he's praying for us. He's praying with us. He's praying through us. And he is teaching us how to pray. All right, he's going to teach us how to worship. He's going to teach us how to worship Jesus and get a revelation of who Jesus is. The Spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. And he wants to reveal who Jesus is to us. If you want to have a greater love and a greater understanding and a greater passion for Jesus, you can't do that without the Holy Spirit. All right? He wants to teach us how to love. He wants to teach us how to read and understand the word of God. Listen, the Holy Spirit is the author of the word. How, I mean, we have the author. Every time we open the Bible, we have the author right there with us wanting to teach us more about the word. Have you ever come across the scriptures like, man, what, what, I don't even really know what this means. The Holy Spirit wants to teach you all things. He wants to teach you about it. He wants to teach you about the word. He wants to teach you. He wants to give you a passion for his word where you just can't get enough of it, where you'll meditate on it day and night. Number five, witness, and we'll talk about that when we talk about power. Number six, he wants to help us in our relationships. He wants to help us with our relationship with Jesus, our parents, our brothers and sisters, our friends, our frenemies, enemies, boyfriend, girlfriend, marriage, teachers, coaches, everyone. He wants to help us. Anybody need some help in relationships this morning? I know I do, all right? He wants to help you, okay? Don't live life without the Holy Spirit. He wants to help you in school. He wants to help you with tests. He wants to help you with homework, sports. He wants to help you with work, bosses, coworkers. He wants to teach you how to enjoy life and enjoy him. He wants to help you make the right decisions. He wants to help you control your emotions. He wants to help you decide what is right and wrong. He wants to teach you how to be bold, to be free, and to stay free, to never feel alone. He wants to teach you how to hear the voice of God. Anybody want more of the Holy Spirit this morning? I'm telling you, he loves you so much. And verse um, John 16, 7 says this, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away. Jesus talking. If I do not go away, the helper or your friend will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. Why did Jesus need to go back to heaven? Well, according to the scripture, Jesus went away because he wanted to give us his spirit, the Holy Spirit, as a helper in our life. Jesus could only be at one place at one time. The Holy Spirit can be with all of us all the time. Jesus could only be in one place at one time. The Holy Spirit can be with all of us all the time. So we all can have the spirit of Jesus because Jesus went up to heaven. That's why we have an advantage because we have a helper in our life that he's giving us an advantage in every area of our life. But most of us are afraid of the Holy Spirit because we freak out. We don't understand what the word tells us about the Holy Spirit. Maybe we've had a bad experience. Maybe I don't know what it is, but but I know the enemy tries to keep us from understanding the Holy Spirit because, well, you know, I just don't understand that. Listen, he wants you to understand. He wants to help you understand. But we have to be open. We have to be open to the spirit of Jesus, all right? It's his spirit. As Jesus was to the 12 disciples, so the Holy Spirit wants to be in our life. But it's even better because we all have his spirit. He wants to teach us about everything. It's to our advantage. We have an advantage in every area of our life. Life becomes so much easier when we have somebody helping us. Amen? E is experience. The Holy Spirit wants us to experience God. He wants us to experience him. He wants us to feel him in a real and tangible way. He is real and he is here right now. He's right here with us. He's going to help you hear what I'm saying today and receive it and uh, let it grow into your heart so that you can grow up and be a mighty man and woman of God. He's here. The first time we experienced the Holy Spirit is when we gave our life to Jesus. You see, the Holy Spirit is the one that opened our eyes and our hearts so that we could receive Jesus. So you already have him because without him, you wouldn't know Jesus. You would not have said, yes, Jesus, I give my life to you without the Holy Spirit. All right. Are you with me? That's important for us to understand. 
but he wants us to experience him more and more and over and over again. In fact, he wants us to experience him every day. Every time we open our Bible, every time we worship, every time we do whatever, he wants us to, he wants to be a part of our life. How do we experience the Holy Spirit? Well, it's really, really easy. All you have to do is ask. Luke 11, 9 through 13 says this. But I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. To the one who seeks, finds. To the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of you fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more? Everybody say, how much more? How much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? If Ben asks for a scrambled, egg, scrambled eggs, I'm not going to give him a scorpion, right? We have a good father, and if you'll ask for the Holy Spirit, he's not going to give you something bad. He's going to give you what we all need, and it's to someone to help us in life. It's God, it's the Holy Spirit. He wants to do that. I love what um, the Amplified Bible says in that first verse. It says, ask and keep on asking. Knock and keep on knocking. Seek and keep on seeking. Faith doesn't give up. Faith continues. Faith will press in. Faith, faith, faith will trust God when it gets hard. And you won't give up. So keep doing it. Keep asking. The, God wants to give you the Holy Spirit more than, you, more than you can even imagine. It's part of the process. It's part of what God wants to do in your life. Salvation's not the end. It's just the beginning of what God wants to do in your life. Um, I, I want to talk to you about three baptisms real quick. Peter talks about it in um, Acts, 2, 20, or Acts 2, 38 and 39. It says, re Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. So Peter outlines three baptisms right here. He says repent. That, that, is, that is being baptized into salvation. That's giving your life to Jesus. And then it says be baptized. And that's talking about being baptized in water. Those are the first two steps. But listen, God wants us to do another step. He wants us to get baptized in the Holy Spirit. It says, receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. It is a gift that the Father, that Jesus wants to give you. He wants to give you a helper in life, all right? Every believer has been born of the Holy Spirit. At salvation, we were born again by the Holy Spirit. Every believer has been born again of the Holy Spirit. But remember, the disciples in Acts 1, Peter included... Um, it says, we were saved, but we were commanded to wait in Jerusalem to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That's what happened on Act, in Acts chapter 2. That was the day of Pentecost. Listen, without the Holy Spirit, we wouldn't be here right now because that was the beginning of the church. We're in church, and we have a Bible because of the Holy Spirit. Think about that for a second. It is a separate Listen, baptism of the Holy Spirit, however, is, all, is about the Holy Spirit and allowing him to saturate us into the fullness and to empower us to know and serve Jesus in a powerful way. It is a separate experience from salvation, so it needs a separate decision. You ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, come and, and fill me, baptize me, let, let it overflow. Let me give you an example this morning, several of them. Uh, it doesn't have to be a long time after you're, after you're saved. In fact, it shouldn't be unless you want to be frustrated for a season. <laughs> right? You want to be, however long you want to be frustrated, just wait until then and then ask the Holy Spirit to come into your life and baptize you and then he'll come in and help you. I would rather do it immediately, right? But a lot of us don't even know that. But that's what the word teaches us. Let's do it quickly. Baptism in the Holy Spirit um, is like jumping well, let me say it like this. Salvation is like taking a drink of living water that resurrects the spirit inside of us. You see, when we, before we got saved, our spirit on the inside of us was dead. And when the Holy Spirit came in, boom, he came in and he made our spirit alive. We came alive then. So every saved person has the Holy Spirit. So let me make a distinction between this. Baptism in the Holy Spirit is like jumping into the ocean where the water came from to be fully em to fully empower us. It's like us being dropped right in the middle of the ocean. We are engulfed with the Holy Spirit. He's in us, on us, around us, everywhere. And he wants to help us. 
Being baptized in the Holy Spirit is a one-time experience, but we can be refilled with the Holy Spirit over and over and over again. Why do we need to keep being filled with the Holy Spirit? Well, because we leak. Right? We, we live in a very demanding world, a very sinful world. And just like we take a drink of water constantly to stay hydrated, why do you need to take another drink today of, of water? Because you get dehydrated, especially when it's hot. So we need to keep asking the Holy Spirit to fill us so that we can stay spiritually hydrated, especially when in hard times. But he, it's not just in hard times. He wants us, I mean, do you drink water when it's just hard or when it's just hot? No, we drink it all the time. And that's what we need to be asking the Holy Spirit to fill us all the time because he wants to help us. Just ask, or, or, and just like it doesn't matter how good the water that we drank last week, we still need some good water today. And the water I, I drank last year was so good, but I still need some more today, right? I still need to be hydrated today. If we don't drink water constantly, we dry up. Sometimes we can dry up as Christians because we're not allowing the Holy Spirit to continually fill us. The same is true if we're not constantly asking, God, Holy Spirit, fill me. I'm, I need to be, I need to, if I'm not full of the Holy Spirit, then I'm going to be full of Randy. And you don't want me to be full of Randy. You want me to be full of the Holy Spirit. All right? The old us comes out when we're not full of the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is the one that's going to help us look like Jesus, talk like Jesus, be like Jesus, get around Jesus, understand Jesus. Right? He's the one. He wants to be our supernatural friend. He wants to walk with us in a real, dynamic, powerful way. How many of us have said, man, I wish God was more real in my life? Well, ask the Holy Spirit to come and fill you, and he'll be more real in your life. Okay? It's about asking. It's not hard. It's just saying, God, I can't, I mean, you know, if you have pride in your life, which we all do, we all deal with levels of that. But we have to say, God, I can't do this life without you. God gives grace to the humble. God opposes the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. When we humble ourselves, he gives us more grace. And guess what the Holy Spirit is? One of his names, the Spirit of Grace. I'm telling you, you could talk to me about anything and I could lead it back to the Holy Spirit. In the Bible, that is. Maybe not anything, but in the, in the Bible, let me clarify Listen, love is the reason um, that he's in our life. If we don't realize that, we'll never truly understand him or relate to him properly. So the next point, we're going to talk about love. Now, the Holy Spirit wants us to passionately love Jesus, and more importantly, he wants us to receive the love that Jesus has for us. And that revelation becomes the foundation of our relationship with God. Revelation, or, or Romans 5.5 5 says this, and and this hope will not lead to disappointment, for we know how dearly God loves us because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. Another great prayer from Paul in Ephesians 3.17 says this, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. It is one thing to hear about the love of Jesus. It's another thing to experience him firsthand. And the way we experience Jesus is through the Holy Spirit. It's, to, it's the advantage that we have. It is one thing to hear him, but it's another thing to experience him. This is what Paul desires for us to experience, God's love through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. It's so important that we are rooted and established in God's love. That only happens when we're in a close relationship with Jesus. And the only way that we can have a close relationship through Jesus is through the Holy Spirit. Yeah, you're catching on. I like that. Through the Holy Spirit, we experience firsthand the love of God. He pours it into our heart. When we have that experience, we are rooted and, and grounded in love. That, that's a mixed metaphor. Paul mixes, or, or, or gives us an agricultural metaphor and a construction metaphor. So when we're rooted and established in God's love, we begin to grow in the fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, on and on and on. That, that fruit, love, and all that joy, that, that begins to grow in our life. Every day we get more and more because we're growing, all right? And then he gives us um, established, and that is a building metaphor. It's about the foundation of the house. Listen, you can't build on something that's not a firm foundation. And having an understanding of who, the, how much God loves you, 
is the foundation of our life. We can't build anything other than on that, okay? And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go on to the next point because I want to get to, I've said all that to say this. We're going to the power, all right? The Holy Spirit wants, us, wants to empower us to change the world. Starting with our world, starting with our heart, starting with our life, starting with our family, starting with our friends, our school, our work, our city, our state, our nation, and on and on and on. Check out the scripture. Love the scripture. Acts 1.8 says this. But you will receive power. Everybody say power. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you'll be my witnesses in Kingfisher and in... Oklahoma and in United States and to the ends of the earth or in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the world. But he wants us to have power locally and globally. You ever feel like you're inadequate, that you can't be used by God? I know that I have been. I have, I've been there. And every single person that was used mightily in the Bible started there. We all feel inadequate. That's why we know we need, we need help. I need help to do what God's called me to do. Because without that help, I can't do it. I can't, I can't do anything apart from Jesus, but with him I can do all things. However weak that we may feel at times, we must understand that Jesus has given us the Holy Spirit and anointed us to do powerful things. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, the Holy Spirit, is the same Holy Spirit that lives on the inside of us. I'm telling you what, if you take somebody that's not breathing and all of a sudden they start breathing, that's power. In the four Gospels, Luke is the only one that continues the story of the next generation. The story of Jesus doesn't stop in the Gospels with Jesus. It continued on in the book of Acts and now it continues in you and I today. The book of Acts is the history of the church, volume one. History mattered to Luke. He used words like eyewitnesses, careful investigation, and orderly account. He talks about many convincing proofs. Look what Luke says in Acts 1, 2 through 4. It says, after his death, he presented himself alive to them in many different settings over a period of 40 days. In face-to-face -face meetings, he talked with them about things concerning the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is on the inside of you, and the kingdom of God is not a matter of talk, but of power. As they met and ate meals together, he told them that they were on no account to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for what the Father promised. The Father's promised us something. The promise you heard from me. Jesus mentioned it, but the, the Father promised us the Holy Spirit. He refers to the earlier gospel, which was Luke, as being about all that Jesus began to do and teach. Now, he tells the story of what Jesus continued to do through the Holy Spirit. Jesus spoke of the Holy Spirit as a gift promised by the Father. Now, he promises that in a few days that the disciples are going to be baptized in the Holy Spirit and receive power to be his witnesses. I want to end with two words. But you will receive power. The word receive here means to take hold of. When you receive the Holy Spirit, you take hold of the most powerful person in the world. I love this next word, power. In the Greek, it's deutimus. It's a rich, rich word, but you'll take hold of power. It means this. It comes from a word that means this. It means to make able or to make possible. So when you receive the power of the Holy Spirit, you step out of where things are impossible to where everything becomes possible. Now you're not afraid to pray for somebody that's sick because you know that you have the power inside of you to make them well because it's not you. You've got someone to help you. You still have to lay hands. You do the things that the Bible tells you to do, but you now step into a new place. You step into power, the ability and to make possible what was never possible in our lives. It doesn't stop there. This word also means force. You think Star Wars made that up, the force be with you? No, it's actually due to his power that Jesus was talking about. The force. You want to go from frustration to being a force to be reckoned with? Ask the Holy Spirit to come into your life. You'll be a force to be reckoned with with the, with the enemy. You won't be able to stand it. It means miraculous power. 
Did you know that miraculous power is on the inside of you when you ask the Holy Spirit to come into your life? Check this out. It means ability. You are now able to do what you couldn't do before. You have the power to do it. It means abundance. Now you're not just barely getting by, but you have someone that's helping you to live life to its fullest, to live life abundantly the way Jesus wants us to live. I love this next part. It also means meaning. This power brings meaning into your life. Now you have a reason and a purpose to be here because you have the power to change people's lives, because you have dudamous power in your life. You can be a witness now. Listen, we need that power in our day-to-day life so that we have something that the world wants so that they can see us and we can be that witness. If we're, if we're barely making it, then nobody's going to want what we have. Everybody else is barely making it too. But when they see us going through issues, going through problems, and we're overcoming them, I love that scripture that we can do all things through Christ who gives us strength. But he's saying, you know, whether, whether I'm well-fed or hungry, and the, the circumstances doesn't matter. I can still do it. And I'll give you an example. I was diagnosed with an incurable disease 14 years ago, an autoimmune disorder. God hasn't completely healed me of that yet. But you know what? I can still do all things through Christ who gives me strength. I'm walking through that. I know that the Bible says that I am healed, and I'm going to believe that more than the pain that I feel. And that's difficult at times, but I have a helper. I have a Holy Spirit that's inside of me that's helping me overcome that. I'm not blaming God for that. I'm, I'm having him help me through it. Because it brings meaning to our life. That power brings meaning. It means strength. It means violence. It means mighty. It means wonderful. It's a work that the Holy Spirit does inside of our life. If God can use a murderer like Paul and a stutterer like Moses and an inconsistent yo-yo Christian like Peter and a shy guy like me, trust me, he can use you too. You just need the Holy Spirit in your life so that you can do it. I'm going to end it with this. Peter's outline to power, his, his timeline to power. You know, Jesus said, who do people say that I am? And Peter said, you're the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus said, you know what? You didn't read that in a book. Nobody taught you that. The, 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 the spirit of God showed you that. And then Jesus starts talking about his death and his resurrection. And Peter starts to scold Jesus. And Jesus said, get behind me, Satan. So he goes from right here to down here, you know. Jesus saying, man, you're doing great to get behind me, Satan. I mean, you know, that's, that's a major difference right there. It's he's just going back and forth, yo-yo. Jesus said, Satan has asked to sift you like wheat, but I've prayed for you. And then Jesus prophesied that Peter would deny him three times, and he does. Denies Jesus and, and, and with, with a girl that's, that's a small servant girl, afraid. Denies Jesus, and the Bible says he went out and he wept bitterly. It broke his heart. The end of the gospel, I think it's John that said, Jesus asks him if you love me three times. That's a message in and of itself right there. And Peter is filled with the Holy Spirit on the, on, on, in chapter 2 of Acts. And then he stands up and he preaches to thousands and thousands of people and 3,000 get saved. And then 5,000 get saved. And then later on in the book of Acts, people are trying to get in Peter's shadow because even his shadow is healing people. But it wasn't his shadow. It was the Holy Spirit. It was the presence of God on his life. He had a helper. But he went from such inconsistency in his life. He had highs and he had lows. But man, when the Holy Spirit got in his life, his relationship with Jesus started just to go like this. His relationship with Jesus wasn't like this. It was the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit wants to do the same thing in our life. He wants to be our helper. He wants us to experience him. He wants us to be his best friend. He wants to fill us with the fruit of the Spirit. He wants to fill us with the power to overcome difficulties in our life. And he wants us to be empowered to change people's lives so that they can change their address from 101 hell to 101 heaven. Who wouldn't want the Spirit of Jesus in their life? I want more of him. That's my heart today. I believe it's your heart too. We're going to pray. We're going to pray this morning. And the worship team is going to come. Father, we thank you so much for who you are. I pray that you would give us a hunger and a revelation of who you are today. That you want to help us in this life. 
If you're here this morning and you don't have a relationship with Jesus, the Holy Spirit is, is tugging on your heart this morning because he wants to introduce you to Jesus. We want to introduce you to Jesus. And it's so important that the, all of heaven will throw a party when one person gives their life to Jesus. So if that's you this morning, I want you to just lift your hand really high. If you're here this morning and you say, Pastor Randy, I want more of the Holy Spirit today. I need more help in my life. I want you to just lift your hand really high. I'm not going to call you up here. Yeah, hands going up everywhere. I want us to stand this morning. I'm going to pray for you. Remember, it is simply asking the Holy Spirit to come into your life. He wants to. So Holy Spirit, we ask you to come into our life. We need help in life. We need help to, to be better spouses, to be better parents, to be better friends, to be better Christians, to be better everything. We need your power. We need your love. We need to experience you. We need to feel you. We need to know you in an intimate way. We need to know Jesus better and to look more like him. So we're asking you, Holy Spirit, to take, to come and flood our hearts with your love. Flood our hearts with who you are. Change us. Change the way we live, the way we speak, the way we talk. God, change everything about us. Make us into the person that you've called us to be today. We love you and we honor you this morning with all of our heart, with all of our soul, with all of our strength this morning. As we sing about the Holy Spirit this morning, as we end, just invite him to come into every area of your life, every room of your house, every room. We're the temple of the Holy Spirit. That's how much, that's how much he wants to be in your life, that, that Jesus said we're the temple. Paul said we're the temple of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit wants to live and move and breathe in our life. So just ask him to come. He wants to.